Keep it coming, Charlie. Yeah, come on, keep it coming. Handy for the guy, mister. Not now, lad, I'm busy. OK, Charlie, hold it there. Mike, Mike, here you are. Are you coming to the Swiss for a liquid lunch? I can't, Jeff. I've got to organise this bonfire. It's already three o'clock. No, but it's your stag night tonight. You should be out enjoying yourself, you know, fighting and being sick. <laughs> well, that sounds great, Jeff, but really, I- I've got to do this. The plant have donated all the material. Yeah, come on, come on, Charlie, keep it coming. What, all, all them barrels? Well, it's only industrial waste from the factory. <laughs> we may as well burn it here as dump it, eh? Are you sure it's safe, Mike? Of course it is. They've got pictures of flames on them, look. <laughs> Don't you worry, Jeff. It's going to be the biggest bonfire that Spence ever had. <laughs> We present On the Town with the League of Gentlemen, starring Mr. Mark Gatiss, Mr. Stephen Pemberton, and Mr. Reese Shearsmith. Episode 4 Gunpowder, Treason, and Plot. But then you've got to look at the road building programme, and at least there was a washing machine for every person. <laughs> It's a quarter past three and you're listening to Bernice Woodall on Spent FM. Now, I tell you what gets me. This annual festival of licensed begging we have to put up with every guy forks night. <laughs> Gangs of kids like gypsies come into my front door demanding money for a, a pillow in a cardi with a balloon for a face. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, it's only a week since they were last round cadging threatening to tip my bins up on Halloween. Well, they won't be trying that trick again, will they? No, not after I put cat muck in the mini Mars bars. <laughs> Anyway, in a few minutes, it's time for our guest spot, local veterinary, Dr. Matthew Chinnery, is going to be talking to us about the best way to keep pets safe on bonfire night. <laughs> As if I care. This is Tenpole Tudor and Who Killed Bambi? <laughs> yes, son, can I help you? Um, will you sell me some fireworks, mister? How old are you? Eighteen. Oh, yeah. You're underage, aren't you? Yeah. Good. <laughs> I think I can sort you out. How about this? Put this into a milk bottle, light a bit of paper, Bob's your uncle. Is it a Roman candle? Petrol bomb. <laughs> I'll knock them up in the back, quid each. Have you got any sparklers? How about these? What are they? Incendiary devices. <laughs> can you write your name in the air with them? You can try. <laughs> well... Oh, I know. You want something spectacular, don't you? I had a kid once. What about this? <laughs> It's a bit old and rusty. I've had it for years. I'm sure it's all right. Is it a rocket? Not far off. It landed on my dad's Anderson shelter during the war. <laughs> all right, how much? Nah, go on. Take it. Gratis. Oh, thanks, mister. How does it work? Well, drop it from the top of your ass. When it stops buzzing, run like hell. <laughs> thanks, see ya. Oh, I love to see a smiling face. <laughs> yes, pal, can I help you? Uh, yeah, I'm looking for... Stag night, is it? Uh, yeah. Close the door. I've got just the thing. Oh, great. <laughs> Benjamin? Oh. What are you doing? You mustn't go in there. That's Radcliffe's room. But it's locked. Well, she's not to be disturbed. She needs the shade and shadow of her own chamber. <laughs> well, I was just trying to find a way out. Well, I thought your Auntie Val and I had made it clear you can stay as long as you like. Yes, but I've been here three weeks now. I was only supposed to stay one night. <laughs> no doubt you're anxious to hasten home to the sanctuary of your own bedroom, where you can throw one over your thumb as soon as the lights are out. <laughs> Look... Please, I just, I really need to get back to London. Of course, of course. Welcome the coming, speed the parting guest. What's, uh, I'm free to go then? Why, yes. By fortunate coincidence, I shall be driving south this weekend for the Reading Toad Fair. <laughs> I am exhibiting Lady, my finest specimen, whom I've been carefully grooming for over three years. It will be no problem to drop you back in London on the way. That would be great. Perhaps in return, you will be so good to babysit for us tonight. I'm taking your Auntie Val to the firework display. She's very fond of bright lights and colours. No, no, that, that would be nice. I haven't even met Radcliffe yet, and it's ages since I've babysat for little girls. Girls? They can look after themselves. It's the toads that need your attention. <laughs> Do that, Jeff. It is stag night. Yeah, and I'm his best man. It has to be memorable. In a good way. He won't look back fondly on you dumping him on the Red Ark estate with exploding socks and a clown mask glued to his face. <laughs> he will. He won't. <laughs> well, he'll 
will be drugged, won't he? Think of the photos. You can't take photos of him. I'm not taking photos of him. Just the tattoos. <laughs> he hasn't got any tattoos. He will have by tonight. Jeff, you're meant to get him drunk and hire a stripper. Yeah. Oh, I have hired a stripper. That bloke in the joke shot game with his cart. Oh, and that reminds me, I want you to sort the music out for her. Find that, um... Da, 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 da. Where am I going to find that? Oh, I don't know. Look in a charity shop. I'm not sure about this, Jeff. He won't like it. Oh, honestly, Brian. The way you talk, you think I was trying to hurt him or humiliate him or something. <laughs> Oh, I better get another one of these. What's that for? Well, I'm shaving his pubes. <laughs> Penny for the guy, mister. Sorry? Penny for the guy. Oh, certainly, just a second. Oi! Oi, what are you doing? Clear off and stop bothering the poor man. Can't you see? He's blind. No, it's all right. No, no, go on, be away with you. Honestly, some people are so inconsiderate against the... You know, as such as yourself. I would have given them some money. Oh, you wouldn't if you could have seen it. The shambles! Just a box with a coat on. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I should clarify. I am a man in a park. Um, I've just explained to that lad that you're a... You know, and he should stop bothering you. Yes, I did hear. Am I shouting? Sorry? Am I shouting? A little. Ah, I thought so. I expect your ears are more finely tuned than an average, everyday, normal, healthy person's, aren't they? They are important, yes. Keep your dark glasses on, for one thing. I hope the bonfire's all right. They, they forecast rain tonight. Oh, was it on the radio? No, on the television. Oh, oh good, good, good for, good for you. Um, yes. Do you watch a lot of... No, 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 well, uh, it's all repeats anyway. Uh, nothing you haven't seen before. Uh, no, no, not that you haven't seen anything before. I mean, accidents happen, don't they, on bonfire night? Didn't you see that public information film with a little girl? Mm, no. No, but someone could have told you about it or written it down for you in that bumpy writing. Hey, hey, you should get a video. I've got one, actually. Because then you could tape stuff just to hear it or, or keep it in case one day... Just, who knows? You can have pig's livers put inside you nowadays, eh? Yeah? A pig's liver instead of a human's, imagine that. Well, there was this Tales of the Unexpected once, and it, it was just an eye on a stalk, just a brain, an eye on a stalk, and it was in a big glass tank, and, you know, if you're lucky, one day, that could be you. If I'm lucky? Mm. Well, listen to me, I, I must be off. It, it, it was nice to meet you. I'm, I'm, I'm going now. Yeah, yeah I, I'm behind you now, OK? Right, ta-da! Where's your dog? <laughs> it is you that has dogs, isn't it? It was on Blue Peter. Oh, how do you shave? Yeah, I bet you cut yourself a lot, don't you? Is that why you see so many bearded cyclists? They always look a mess, though, don't they? Dandruff, crumbs in the beard. Excuse me. Mum used to point to them on the bus and say, that's what'll happen to you if you keep fiddling with yourself. <laughs> oh, it didn't stop me, though, did it? <laughs> I expect you get lonely, don't you? Oh, he's gone. Was it something I said? <laughs> Mr. Ingleby, do we have uh, a Mr. Ingleby? I'm here. <laughs> oh, um, would you like to come into the office? I'm in the office. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, I didn't see you down there. Now then, welcome to Close Encounters Dating Agency. My name's Stella. Let's have a look at your application form. Can you lift me up? <laughs> yeah, there we go, yeah. Right. Caring, witty, attractive. Sorry, is this what you are, what you want? <laughs> it's what I want. <laughs> right. Interest. Now, I see you've ticked basketball. Yes. <laughs> Would that be as a spectator? Or... No, I'm actually involved with the local team, the Spent Giants. <laughs> really? Yes, I'm the mascot. <laughs> OK. Uh, any other hobbies or pastimes? I like to play chess. Oh, and uh, who do you play? The bishop and sometimes a rook. <laughs> right, right, I see. Well, look, Mr Ingleby, I can't make any promises. After all, we're, we're looking for a very special kind of lady. Thank you. But, you know, there is one thing I do have to ask you. Is size going to be a problem? No, I think it's what you do with it that counts. <laughs> Um, uh, hello. Afternoon, sir. 
I never knew there was a blacksmith in Spent. You're not easy to find. Someone suggested I should come and see you. Oh, yeah? Uh, this um, candelabrum, my friend gave it to me, and, and there was an accident on, on one of the stems. As, um... I see the problem. Oh, Mr. Blacksmith, I'll, I'll be honest with you. It wasn't an accident. Me and Derek are having a fight. We've been living together for five years, but I, I can't tell my family. Derek says I'm in denial. I'm afraid I'll lose him. It's all bent, isn't it? <laughs> you what? Candlestick. Oh, I see. Can you straighten it? Is that what you want? <laughs> I don't know. Now, look here. What's bent can't be unbent. Not without it cracking. And if something gets bent by accident, it ain't always a bad thing. Some it can be beautiful, even if it is all bent and twisted. <laughs> My old nan, see, she had a big tree. Big old beech, all gnarled and knobbly. Now, it didn't grow straight, that tree. It had a kink in it. Fact is, she didn't love it any the less. It was the finest tree in the orchard. But it never bore no apples, though. <laughs> well, it was a beech tree. Yeah. <laughs> And if you expect expecting apples of a beech tree, you're going to be sorely disappointed. So the candelabrum stays bent? Yes. But don't try putting any candles in it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr Blacksmith. Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy. It's 4.30pm and you're listening to Bernice Woodall on Spent FM. Time for more phone fun now, so here goes. I'm just dialing. They're in. Hello, fire service. Yes, um, can you help me? I'm on the Red Hawk estate and there's, there's a huge fire in one of the houses. Could you give me the address, please? Come quickly, there's kiddies in there. I can hear people screaming. I think they're trapped all the smoke. <coughs> all right, Miss Police, calm down. Give me your name. Oh, now I'm on fire. My shoes are melting. Oh, oh help me. My tights are hot. Oh, the street is ablaze. My hair's all burnt. I look like Humble. Help, help. <laughs> What's your name, please? My name is Bernice Woodall, and you've been had on today's phone phone. How do you feel to be... You stupid cow. <laughs> well, if you can't take a joke... <laughs> here's the prodigy in Firestart. We've got some good stuff in here today, dear. What's that, dear? I said we've got some good stuff coming. Hey, it's amazing what people throw away. Well, it is all for charity, dear. Yeah. Excuse me, how much is this cassette? Oh, it should sell it, dear. Has it got a price on it? I don't think so. Let's have a look. No, there's no price on it, dear. Reedy! Reedy! I need a price check, dear. What is it, dear? It's a cassette. It's a cassette, is it? What's wrong, dear? <laughs> I've got a gentleman here. He's got a cassette. Does he want a bag for it, dear? You want a bag for it, dear? Well, how much is it? There's no price on it, dear. What does he want? It's a cassette. It's a cassette, is it? Right, cassette. <laughs> Do you want a bit a minute, dear? Do you want a bag for that? Yes, please. There we are. What's that? Is that too big? It's a nice bag, is that? I should charge you extra for that bag. <laughs> I've got the cassettes, dear. Which cassette does he want? No, dear. He's got a cassette here. Oh, I see. He's brought us a cassette, has he? Thank you, dear. Can we keep the bag? No, I want to buy the cassette, but there's no price on it. It's for a stag night. No, dear. He's got the cassette already. I need a price check, dear. All right. No need to be rude, dear. I'm not being rude, dear. You are rude, dear. Have you got the book, dear? I'll need the book, Reenie. He wants a book as well, does he? Right. Oh, here we are. Look, right. One cassette. Cassette. How do you spell that, dear? C-A-S... Just a minute, C... Tell, tell you what, just put tape. <laughs> yeah, I've got, the, I've got the books, dear. Which book does he want? I don't want a book. He wants some tape as well, dear. Does he want some tape? Does, does he want a bag for that, dear? Do you want a bag for that, dear? No! No, no need to, to be rude, dear. dear. I'm not being rude. I just, I just want to buy this tape. What about the cassette? Well, how much is it? Let's say 12 pence, dear. Right. Thank you. <laughs> oh, no, I can't change that, dear. It's only a pound cost. I'll just have to get some change. Reedy! Reedy! Yes, yes, that's all right. Just a minute, dear. I've got the tape. No, he wants change, dear. He wants to get change. We can get change in here, dear. No one's looking. <laughs> just the jacket, is it? What, what are you doing? That, that's my jacket. I put it all in the book, Reedy. So that's the cassettes, the books, the tapes and the jackets. Right, all together, that's uh, 28 pence, please. <laughs> Put it back for that, dear. Okey pokey, pig in the pokey. Now then, job seekers. As you know, we've been looking today at interview technique, and before we pack up, we're going to do a little role play. But it's six o'clock. We've only got the bonfire. Well, you'll just have to wait, won't you, Mickey Love? <sighs> now then, 
I want you all to imagine, gents, that I've got the sack. Hey! <laughs> but, using all the skills I've got from my restart course, I soon get an interview for another job. What job? It's shoving trolleys round as the car park, Mickey Love. <laughs> yeah, I, I know it's out of your league, but we're only playing. So, I want someone in this room to interview me, and I'll show you the right way to conduct yourself. Any takers? I'll do it then. Ross, thank you. Come and sit in the middle. And remember, you can be really tough on me. Can I have your clipboard, Pauline? Um, yeah, yeah, you can, yeah. And your pen? <laughs> be very careful with it. Ooh, I feel all naked. I'm glad you're not. Sorry. <laughs> so, you're interested in the trolley job? Mmm, that's right. I'm very interested, yes. I feel that my ability to work well within a team and yet take individual responsibilities are important qualities in a job of this nature. What work experience have you had? I left school early and began well, to so work... so you didn't go to college? No, I felt that actual work experience... So you have no qualifications? Well, if you don't count 30 years in the employment service. Well, no, no, I don't. I'm talking about academic achievement, degrees, diplomas. No, come off it, Ross. Shoving trolleys round as the car park. A bleeding monkey could do it. <laughs> I see. Would you say you're a fairly egregious person? <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you an egregious person? Do you have an egregious personality? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I do, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say some other words to you now, and I want mm -hmm. you to reply with the first thing that comes into your head, all uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. Home. Spent. Family. Dead. Friends. Pens. <laughs> no, friends. It pens! They're the best friends you can have. Everything I know about people I learn from pens. If they don't work, you shake them. If they still don't work, you chuck them away, bin them. <laughs> really? Love? No. Oh, so you never married? No. There was someone once. But... And could I get your age, Miss Campbell Jones? Well, I think that's a lady's prerogative. I need to know how to give... old you are for the record. Well, let's just say I'm as old as my gums. And how old are you? I'm 48. Right, thank you. <laughs> well, thanks very much for coming in to see us this afternoon. Thank you very um, much. But I'm afraid I can't offer you this position. <laughs> what do you mean? You strike me as a bully. You're ill mannered, ignorant, and foul mouthed. You're not even qualified for this job. And apart from anything else, you're too old. <laughs> Miss. Sorry. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Ross. You, uh, you handled that uh, very well. But I, I wonder how well you'd handle the situation a bit more like this. Could I have that clipboard plaque, please, love? Thanks. Ah! Oh! oh, a bully oh, am I? Oh, 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 bloody mouth! Oh, when you eat those words, oh, egregious, oh, egregious, oh, eat it, eat your oh, words. Oh, oh, this is oh, egregious, oh, 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 Stop it, bully. Please. Sorry, Mickey Love. So, Ross, when do I start? <laughs> now, Benjamin, the girls are fast asleep. As are the toads. Oh, right, right. But remember, on no account should Radcliffe be let out of her room. She is a delicate child, and the fireworks are liable to scare her. Oh, OK. She may attempt to attract your attention. Pay her no heed. Beware the siren call of her silver tongue. Fine. Now, I've left some Lolo Rosso for Lady. I want her in peak condition for the journey south. Do not betray me. Well, you can rely on me. Have a nice time. They're good costumes you're wearing. Is it fancy dress? No. <laughs> Tony, she'll be down in a minute. This is Julie's dad. So I'm told. All right, Tony. Hello. <laughs> Sit down, Tony. She won't be long now. Julie! She'll not be long now, Tony. She's like her mum, trying on every dress she's got. Ooh, that wouldn't take me long. I've only got two dresses. Charlie won't buy me clothes. She's lying, Tony. I do buy her clothes. She just can't fit into them anymore, eh? <laughs> <laughs> he can talk, can't he, the fat pig? <laughs> He's broken all the casters on his chair. Stella. You're going to get them fixed to what, Charlie? In a minute. So what are you up to tonight, Tony? Oh, we're just going for a meal on that, you know, watch the bonfire. Oh, well, you want to go in Swiss. They do meals now. Yeah, not going in Swiss. That's where it took me on our honeymoon. It's the right dump. No, it's not, Tony. They've done it out since then. It's like a ship with shells and nets and that. Yeah, and it stinks of fish. <laughs> do you want a beer, Tony? Um, you could have one. You don't have to have one if you don't want one, Tony. Let the lad have a beer. You don't want a beer. You don't have to get drunk to have a good time, do you, Tony? You would if you were married to her, eh, Tony? <laughs> 
Oh, she's lovely. Mm, you're joking, aren't you? Charlie, if you want a beer, just get one. Don't make the lad have one, you fat pig. Shut up, you bastard. <laughs> I'll, I'll just see if Julie. No, ready. sit down, don't let him scare you. Are you working, Tony? No, I'm at college, actually. Oh, but you're dead brainy. What are you learning? Modern languages. <laughs> oh. Do you follow football, Tony? Speak a language. Who's your team? No, I don't really follow football. Do you do Spanish? Un poquito. Un poquito! <laughs> do you like them gypsy kings? Does he, yeah. Do you, Tony? They're all right. Oh, that's it. I'm coming to live with you. You could be my toy boy. Oh, mm, take her. You're very welcome to her. Oh, if you weren't going out with old Julie, I could show you some things. <laughs> I've seen them, Tony. They'll make you sick. <laughs> Julie won't know what to do. Big fat ass. She's just a, she's just a stupid little girl. She wears glasses, you know. I know. I could have gone to college, Tony. Oh, listen to him, Tony. He's a liar. She's bled me dry. I get so bored, Tony. He's such a boring man. Well, look around you. She wants for now. We haven't had sex in months. <laughs> I can't help it, Tony. I get tired. What kind of life is that? Make something happen, Tony. Please, Tony. Tony, please! <laughs> I, I, I better get Julie. We'll miss the fireworks. <laughs> oh, don't end up like us, Tony. You're still young. Charlie's only 42, and look at him. It's a joke. <laughs> Where do the years go, Tony? We've never done now. You learn Spanish. <laughs> Mind how you go, son. Oh, Charlie. What are we going to do now? I don't know. Should we go down Swiss? Yeah, all right. All right. <laughs> I'll just drop these castles off of the blacksmiths. I'll see you down there. All yeah? right, love. Yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> How are you feeling, mate? Oh, I've got a day. Yeah, have another Neurofen with your whiskey. Steady on, Jeff. <laughs> oh, shut up, Brian. Go to that Cheryl's end night if you want to be a woman. Us blokes are having a laugh, aren't we, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, mate. You'll never forget this night as long as you live. <laughs> I feel sick. I won't be a minute. No, you can't go yet, Mike. I've got a surprise for you. <laughs> do, Charlie? Jimmy, I know it's late. I'm glad I caught you. I brought you these casters. They need soldering. All right. We're fighting again, Jimmy. She just keeps on and on. She's driving me mad. I'm at the end of my tether. I, I don't know what to do for the best. Truth hurts, don't it? Point is, what's true is true. What's right is right. What is, is. <laughs> there ain't no sense in wishing otherwise. What's wrong won't make up, down, or black, white, or wrong, right. <laughs> Take no good trying to heat up something that's gone on cold, or wishing for December and July, or wanting a skylark back in its egg. <laughs> Thing's busted, and it's broken, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I'll come back Thursday for the casters. No, you won't. You'll throw them away. And get some new ones? In time. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks. It's all right, Mike. We're just taking your clothes off. Oh, <laughs> fancy putting that mask on him already, Jeff. You could have waited. That's his face, Brian. <laughs> the mask's still in me back. I hope you know what you're doing. Well, what do you mean? Well, it must be quite a strong glue if you have to mix it in two parts. <laughs> the mask won't come off. Just help me get his clothes off. We've got to dress him up yet. Oh, no. What? The tattoos? It, it looks like Rod Steiger. What, what is it? It's all down his back. It's a fox hunt. Horses down his back. Dogs on his ass. Where's the fox? Where do you think? <laughs> now pass us that bag of razors. <laughs> Benjamin. Oh, is that you, Chloe? Go back to sleep. <sighs> Radcliffe, I'm going to let you out. We're going to surprise Benjamin. <laughs> Be quiet, as quiet as a mouse. Come on. Oh, now, Chloe, what did I say? And you shouldn't be... Oh. <gasps> oh, you must be Radcliffe. <laughs> You're a big girl, aren't you? <laughs> I thought you were twins. We are. <laughs> we want to play a game. Oh, no, girls, you really must go back to bed. <laughs> oh. No, 
now come on, don't try that. She won't stop unless we play a game. Game. No, no games. It's bedtime. If you don't play a game, we'll tell Daddy of you. We'll say we came downstairs and caught you in his chair doing something naughty. Oh. <laughs> he won't believe you. Benjamin's been naughty. Benjamin's ben been naughty. Naughty. Ben naughty. Ben naughty. Ben ben naughty. 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 No, shut ben up. Ben been shut naughty. up. Shut up. All right. We'll play a game, but just a quick one, mind. <laughs> Toad, middle. Yes, Radcliffe, yes. Let's play Toad in the middle. <laughs> where's, she, where's she gone? You'll see. <laughs> if this game's what I'm thinking, then it's not a good idea. Now, Benjamin, you've got to stand in the middle. Girl, stop this now. Whee! Oh. <laughs> oh, no, please stop it, girls. If you want to get lady, oh. you'll have to catch it for yourself. Oh. Oh. Whee! 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 Right, give me that bloody toad. Ah, <laughs> oh, Benjamin! <laughs> Look what you've done to Lady! All squashed up. <laughs> oh no, he'll kill me! It's all right, Benjamin. She's still breathing. Yes, what are we going to do? Leave it to me, Benjamin. Hello? Is that Dr. Chinnery? <laughs> there you go, Barbara. 30 quid wants it. It's all right, Jeff. Keep your money. I was only 30 seconds into my act before he fainted. <laughs> so, uh, where is he now? We've left him on the Red Orchestra. estate. You should see the state of him. He looks like Wurzel Gummidge with a clown head on. <laughs> was he all right? Yeah, Brian's watching him. I'll go back in a minute. Jeff, Jeff, is Mike with you? Brian, what are you doing is here? Is he with you? No, he's not. You're meant to be watching him. I was watching him, but I had to have a slash when I got back. He'd gone. Well, where is he? I don't know. Oh, Brian, come on. I hope we find him, Jeff. Well, so do I. I paid a fortune for them exploding socks. <laughs> penny for the guy, mister. Ah, yes. There you go. One penny. Oh, thanks, mister. Ooh, look, Harvey, green fire. Yes, in this light, the flames remind me of my precious toads as they jump and lick at the cold night air. Excuse me, have you got a light from a sparkler? Oh, that's not a sparkler, that's a swan vesta. Oh. <laughs> I'll kill that joke shop man, he charged me 4 50 for three of these. Ooh, look, Harvey, they're going to burn the guy. Go and help them. Very well, very well. Here, uh, let me take the legs. Thanks, mister. Mm. Oh, he's very heavy. All right, then, let go on three. One, two, three. A very convincing job, young man, although I think you'll find that Forks did not have the face of a clown. Excuse me, Mrs. Denton. You haven't seen Mike, have you? I've lost him. No, I haven't. You could ask Harvey. He's by the bonfire burning the guy. What? Look, it's feet are catching. You have been listening to On the Town with a League of Gentlemen, starring Mark Gatiss, Steve Pemberton and Reese Shearsmith. The programme was written by the cast and Jeremy Dyson. The producer was Sarah Smith.